All right, back on the F-150, the 91 F-150. And today, I think the plan really is to just take a look at the alternator, see if there's any kind of quick fix. I'm really not going to go in depth on this. I'm not even going to even try and fix it if there is a problem. And then take a look at the electric windows, see if the, there's any kind of issue with the motor, uh, especially the driver's side. It wouldn't go quite back up even when the battery was installed, fully charged and running. And then the other thing I want to take a look at is the ignition key, how it, it just feels kind of sticky. Um, I'm hoping it can kind of just go in there, grease it up, and then everything's a okay. I'm thinking that's what it is. I don't think that there's anything broken uh, or whatever, but I guess we'll find out as we go through it. With nothing running, we're starting with a battery that is 12.95 volts. All right, just popped in the key. I'm just about to start it. Let's see if this works. See, battery shows low. I'm not sure what's up with that. All right, not sure why that is. Giving me a battery light. A light, light battery light and a check engine. All right, interesting. Off to a good start. Now we have a battery that says 12.63. Okay, sure. Oh, it's climbing. All right, I played with the starter solenoid, kind of disconnected some wires, tightened everything up. Um, this is the from the ignition switch where uh, it triggers the solenoid. I tightened that up. I don't know if that's really the problem. Actually, I don't know if any of that is the real problem, but I'm hoping that I kind of just created some better contact or whatever. Who knows, right? I also bypassed it with a screwdriver like, you know, you do when you're jump ring a car and that turned over the starter. No problem. Had no issues there. The battery is back up to 12.77. I actually saw it go up to 12.88 before I started testing the starter solenoid. So, um, you know, he drained a little bit but should be fine I'm gonna try it again all right here we go huh I don't know what's going on Interesting. All right, now I have no idea what's going on. Okay, it just started, great. I'm not even sure what I was doing. Uh, I also found that this little stick shift is not, um, not quite in the right place. So that seems to cause an issue when trying to start it. You can see right there that the battery uh, is climbing actually a little bit from what it was before. I don't know if you can tell, no, it's not really moving now, but it was before. Anyway, let me go check the voltmeter and see what we have there. It's also idling at just about a thousand. Well, it's been running for about five minutes and it's now at 14.2, whatever, 14.3. The idle has gone down to about six or 700. The battery needle is a little bit higher than it was before. Now, I know some alternators, you have to hit a certain RPM before it actually engages. This one looks like it's working, but you know, for the sake of argument, let me just bring it up to about 1500 RPM. I know some uh, start at 1200 RPM, but hey, just for the sake of argument, Okay, let's bring it up to 2,000. It's idling kind of rough there. Okay, it picks itself up. Now it's fine. I'm gonna let it run for another five minutes and then I'm gonna turn it off and see where the battery is at. All right, here's something uh, that I was playing with. I was kind of playing with the tape deck and the, uh, the heating and all that, just messing around as if I was gonna use the truck normally. Um, and then I noticed this. I'm just gonna put the fan on high for the heating. I don't think it should be doing that, to be honest with you. If there's actual amperage coming out of that uh, alternator, it, I don't believe that it should do that, but I'm not an expert. All right, I just shut it off. Let's go take a look at the battery. Well, it's saying 13.5, which is actually impressive. I wasn't expecting that. The reason why I say that is because um, I, I touched the accelerator just for a bit, you know, kind of blipped it all over again, and then it came back to idle and it kind of stumbled a little bit. Not 
heavy and it didn't lose any kind of power or whatever it just you know shook a little bit anyway let me go back in and try and start it again everything is pretty much off and back in the same position and just try and start it again see here the battery seems kind of low and that seems to be working and the battery is going back up so i'm not really sure what the issue is Seems kind of weird. But here's just kind of a, a, a little thing that I'm, I'm playing around with. I was just putting it in drive and in reverse just to kind of mess around with it. Um, I know that the indicator here is not quite on par. It's a little bit off, but basically I'm just gonna give it a blip and then you'll see kind of what it does with the RPM. So as you can see, it's hunting for idle. It's, it's just weird. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, it might be normal. I honestly haven't owned an old vehicle in a long time, so hard to say. I mean, maybe it's just a spark plug wire or something, like whatever, who knows. Battery seems to be doing okay. Let's check the voltage. Yep, seems to be charging, seems to be okay. Well, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. I, I'm, there's not much else that I can test. Um, I am gonna order a one wire alternator for, for this truck and hopefully that solves my problems. I just find it weird that um, it stutters quite a bit and as soon as I turn on the heating fan, the voltage just drops. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. I just have a feeling that the alternator is working but it's not working to its fullest. Could be a number of reasons and at this point um, I was going to put a one wire alternator in there anyway so I'm just doing it right now rather than later. Okay so now what I'd like to tackle is the ignition key and the gear selector and see what we get from there. I'm gonna have to start taking some things apart so let's get started. All right just gotta take the horn off and stuff. I've already taken the two bolts that are out uh, from behind it. It should hopefully just Come out, perfect. And then you just gotta disconnect the wires. And that's that, They're just two little clips, super easy to take out. They only go in one place. All right, taking off the steering wheel. Uh, there's a nut, pop that off. I used hand tools, I didn't use anything fancy or impact guns. Uh, and then I got a steering wheel puller. Um, I'm just using that, it's already loose. I'm just using that to take it off and then it slides right off. Super easy, get the tool. Okay, after a little bit of playing around with it, I finally got it out. I just used a punch and then placed it, there's like a little pin here or hole uh, that you put it into and then push the key or the ignition into the uh, start position, jiggle it around, move it around and it'll uh, eventually pop out. Wasn't too hard, I did it twice just to make sure I was okay and understood what was going on. And now, as you can see, the tumbler comes right out. You obviously need the original key, otherwise this doesn't work. So this is the part that gets interesting. Now I already took it apart because I was like, what the heck? And it's not like I can show you directly anyways. But to start off with, there's two Phillips heads right here and another like quarter inch style screw right here. Um, I took this guy off, not sure if I really needed to at this point, but it's out. Then basically this slides forward. You might have to um, play with the wire harness or something and then just kind of shove it through, which will help you push that out. Now mine's pretty loose from some other stuff that was done and it kind of just pushed out of the way very easily. And then when you're in here, there are three other Phillips screws in here that you have to remove. And then that basically should loosen this up. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit and get that off. And there we go, I popped it off. I also put that screw back in there so I wouldn't lose it. It seems to just hold this in place. Uh, it doesn't seem to interfere with anything. And there you go, that's kind of what it looks like. So basically this is where the tumbler or the key goes. Um, it rides on this, which then pushes another like little lever back here. I don't know if I can show it. Yeah, there we go, kind of thing. And then your key kind of goes in there. It all feels really just kind of sticky. So I'm gonna take that apart and show you the pieces. Okay, well, I can't completely take it apart because it's gonna be a little bit more than I actually wanted to, to get involved with. But there's this thing here, this little arm right there, 
that pushes on the electronics way further down the column uh, because this has a tilt steering column and that that's pretty stiff it's not it's not very loose this here still looks good like the teeth don't look too worn out or beat up uh, they don't look like they they've been chewed on um, it does have the spring loaded thing here i'm going to lube that up a little bit now you see some teeth in there right there that's a little brass uh, gear that goes on your tumbler or at least attaches to at the bottom i'm going to try and take that out clean it and also grease that to make sure that at least everything here on this upper level here is a uh, good uh, if that works well and I don't have to do anything else, perfect. I'm going to leave it like that. If not, then I'll dig uh, further down on the column. So let me get started on greasing that up and then just try and reassemble it. That's the brass gear that the tumbler turns. There's a little cover and a clip that holds it in place. It basically just goes straight down there. Uh, so let me clean that up and then lube it up. All right, got all this greased up. Uh, yes, it's excessive, but I just want to make sure that there's enough in there. I'm going to go ahead and clean up any of the excess as I assemble. Uh, there's also this guy here and has a little spring in there, so I greased up inside there. And as you can tell, I also greased up this. That's the rod that goes all the way down the steering column. And there's also a little stabilizer piece there, or I guess a connecting piece to the tumbler. And I also greased in there. Yeah, it's a bit excessive, but um, there's nothing electrical or anything important back there. Just some moving middle parts all right let me go ahead and assemble this and i'll bring it back all right it's you know part way assembled now when you put this back in that um brass gear that's in there is is keyed so it has to be rotated a certain way for this to fit back it also has to fit on that sliding piece right that popped up right there because that's also tooth uh, so everything in here these three pieces all have to kind of be aligned and you'll know when it's aligned because the key for the tumbler um, will be perfect. And then you'll know that it, it, it'll go in right away. But once it's installed correctly, you'll see you'll be able to pop the key in no problem. Super easy. Um, this didn't fully uh, improve everything uh, with the uh, turning of the key. Uh, it's still a little stiff. I have a feeling it's just further down on the column where all the electronics are, or at least the connection and that rod that moves around on the uh, contacts. Uh, but it is definitely, definitely better than what it was before. The other thing I noticed too while I was in here is that pin that you see there was kind of sticking out. And I, I ended up pushing it back in and it seemed to make uh, the gear selector uh, a little bit better, uh, at least on the indicator. The low gear is still a little hard to get into, uh, but that just could be the column that's not uh, quite right. But everything else seems to be all right. I'm going to you know plug the battery back up and uh, try it again oh and side note that reminds me yeah when you're doing all of this unplug the battery don't forget it i almost did and the other thing is don't forget your indicator bar just take that out um, it's just a simple screw and then as you can see there's a, a little flat edge there i just used uh, some needle nose pliers and it it's, came off no problem all right fully assembled looks good solid at least feel solid so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually just going to go ahead and just start it up and make sure that my gear selector shifter actually worked maybe that solved the uh, issue that i was having all right if my gear selector shifter or whatever works then technically i should be able to just start this up without having any issues key in nope see there's, there's something in here if it's too much towards the reverse, it doesn't like it. I think it's been in the sun for a while and that's why the P, like the orange part is not showing as well, but here it should start now. And the battery is doing good. The RPM is a little high, but it's been cold. All right, so it's settled down a little bit. So let me just try and see if this should just pop into reverse like that, and it did. And then that should be neutral. Yep. That should be drive. Yep. That should be two, but I really won't tell the difference between that and drive. Doesn't seem to catch that very well. 
or my tires are slipping, I'm not sure. And then number one. Yeah, my tires are slipping, so that's what that was, <laughs> okay. So I can't really tell from there, but anyway, let me just try and get out of this hole that I created. Yeah, that was neutral, see? All right, see, it looks like it's in reverse, but it's not, it's really not. Anyway, that's pretty good, I'm happy with that, for now. All right, another day, another solution, right? So the window doesn't seem to go up and down very well, so what I wanna do is actually just take the whole panel off and just try and take a look at what's going on in there. Maybe do some testing and see uh, where we get. So I think there's just uh, a few Phillips screws uh, that I gotta take off. So that's what I broke. Son of a gun. I hate that. I really hate that. Alright, got the panel off and I took the speaker out and then the support here for the hand for the handle grip when you like close the door. Now I was just taking a look at everything and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gut it and then take a look at all the individual pieces. I uh, had issues with the door lock too. It doesn't doesn't seem to actuate, so uh, I'm gonna remove that and then see what uh, what we get. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna gut everything and see where we're at. Okay, I went and cheated a little bit. I was working on the driver's side door and then I decided to move on the passenger side because no matter what on the passenger side, I really had to gut everything 100%. I ha I'm changing the door lock because this one is manual. There's no electric provisions. I also had to change the tumbler for the door lock because this door isn't original or at least matching to the other side. Um, speaker wasn't in there. I took basically the brace for the armrest and all that out. I took the uh, window mech and my manual window mechanism out, uh, all the glasses out. The only thing I gotta say that was like really, really problematic was these rivets that they hold in the uh, manual or electric uh, window opener. Uh, it was just a pain in the butt to deal with. It's hard to get in there. Well, and not really hard, but uh, it's it's just tedious. You, I grinded these a little bit, grinded that one a little bit. Um, you know, worked on trying to drill them out and push them through, and then finally the mechanism fell. It, it was just a time-consuming thing, but you know, that's sometimes that's annoying. <laughs> All right, on the driver's side, everything is still pretty much there. Um, I'm still gonna have to do the same thing. Uh, the electric motor, if I can show you, uh, which is right there, is pretty much caught behind all this stuff. I can access one of the bolts that holds it in place, but I can't do anything else. So I'm gonna have to drill all these rivets out and then pop everything out. And as I mentioned, I was having an issue with this door lock, so I wanna see what's going on with that. Once everything is out, I'll just go ahead and just like physically try all the uh, electricals and stuff like that and make sure that everything is good. I'm not actually gonna film it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Um, it's just kind of a pain in the butt to film it and do it, uh, especially for something that is in such tight quarters and you really just don't see anything. Well, 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 that was a bit of a bear, doing that three times. I'll show you why three times. Some of you may already know. So I got all the glass pulled out, I got the door lock pulled out, the little solenoid that goes with it for the electric door locks, all the window mechanisms, speakers, any kind of brace or whatever, all pulled out. It's all empty. I cleaned uh, down in the track there. There was just a couple little things, some dirt and leaves and stuff. And I got that out, didn't go too crazy. But just a quick resume of how to like, kind of take this apart. Basically there's a, a couple of screws there to pull out the little vent window, a couple of bolts here and here, somewhere, wherever, I forget. 
Uh, and that basically takes the whole assembly out for the around the window and the window itself. Uh, then you have to undo the motor. And then you got to play around with all that stuff and then kind of like slide it out and move pieces around and then they, they all just come out. Once all that's done, then you can undo the, the lock and anything related to it. Uh, but you can't get to the lock until you remove the track that's here, which really is just a pain in the butt. So you got to do all that, like remove the glass and remove the, the motor and and all that to try and basically shim everything back out uh, it's kind of a pain but uh, you know I got it done with a little bit of a struggle and this is why I had to do it three times this is the original door on the passenger side and I pulled all the stuff that I needed from it so basically the lock the window mechanism for the electric motor and all that um, I got a few spare parts too from it which I'm keeping oh and the um, the lock the key lock because the one that's on there now is not the original one which is you know in this one so these are kind of the spare parts that I got although I will be using this in uh, the door to replace the old one that was in there but I got some hinges a bunch of screws and clips and stuff like that the door handle uh, the lock I even took the uh, trim where the window slides in and then this window was still in good shape so I just popped it out and um, I'll keep it as a spare you never know and also this track which this rubber actually slides into this track it allows the window to slide up and down in there here's the original piece there's the original piece same with the other side there and there I'm gonna go ahead and test out those motors and see if they work uh, the one thing I have to say on the passenger side this is the arm that connects to the solenoid whereas it the solenoid is right here so it's actually been like completely broken so I won't be using that uh, I'm gonna look into either getting a new one or maybe not using it. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet, but I'll look at the prices and availability of uh, stuff. All right, got the uh, driver's side motor, window motor. I'm gonna see if that works. The battery is in. Oh, I forgot the key in. All right, that's in the accessory mode. Now that the key is in, let's see if this works. <laughs> what am I looking for here? All right, let's see. Okay, so driver's side, it spins, but it's not engaging any kind of mechanism. I'm not sure if it's just seized. I, I can see the gear that's in there and it kind of pops and moves, but um, I, it's not doing anything at all. Let's try the passenger side. I keep grabbing the wrong wire. Well, that one works. Sounds a bit tired. Well, it goes through the whole motion, but honestly, it does sound a bit tired. All right, passenger side works. Driver's side does not work. I'm going to look into either replacing the motor or replacing just the gear on the other side. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards replacing the motor just because, um, you know, the aids and all that. And I'll, at the same time, I'll just re-grease everything once I've replaced the, the motor. But I'm gonna look into it, see what uh, I come up with, and then go from there. So I went ahead and tried the uh, door lock solenoids. This is on the passenger side, the one that broke. Um, I don't know if it's a contact or something, but there is no movement. There's nothing on it, clicking, nothing. I also tried on the driver's side, same thing. It doesn't click, doesn't make any noise, no movement. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but I'm going to take a look into it and uh, go from there. All right, so this is where I'm at right now. Um, basically, I'm going to order the motors for the glass. So I just put some garbage bags here just to kind of cover it up. I didn't want to do anything else. As for the solenoid for the door lock, I'm not even going to bother buying them. Uh, I just removed them. I realize they're really expensive for something that um, really I don't 100% need. Even the electric windows I don't need, but they are a nice little luxury and I would like to keep them. I also, as you can tell, I went ahead and greased the crap out of everything just to make sure everything was good. These are all like fully functioning now and they're also uh, Loctite in on the bolts. Uh, I did that on both sides so the doors are now like identical. And for now, this is the way I'm just gonna leave it. There was only one extra thing I had to do on the passenger side. Like I said, I, I did everything the same way so all the locking mechanism works is that wire harness which actually goes through the door and into the cab uh, wasn't hooked up so what I did is I just kind of passed it through and just made all the connections again all right so I checked out the three things that I really wanted to check out in this video which was the alternator the ignition and the door windows now with the alternator I'm not convinced that it is fully functioning I believe that there's something wrong uh, with the actual charging and amperage or the amperage is too low something something is up and there's a, just a gut feeling that I want to change it and I'm going to go to a single wire alternator 
and make my life a whole lot easier. Now for the doors, again, I'm not going to get the solenoids for the door locks, but I will get the motor for the windows. Other than that, everything is fine. I have no issues. I might look into getting a couple other things like some of the trim and the molding, uh, like they're all the rubber seals, I should say, uh, around the window and see if I can get that and maybe make it look a little bit nicer. Now for the ignition, I pretty much did what I could with the ignition switch without trying to completely disassemble the steering column and all that, trying to get down a little bit further into the electrical. But for now, honestly, it does work, you know, at least 50% better, if not 75% better. So that's why I'm kind of leaving it where it is now. When I start doing more interior stuff, then maybe I'll dig a little bit deeper, but it seems to function. I also kind of tweaked a little bit the uh, gear selector and it seems to be working just a smidge better you know maybe 50 percent better so again i'm happy with that for now it's not going to prevent it from uh, functioning it just means it's a little bit better none of that is like really serious nor a uh, heavy concern for me so like i said i'm just going to leave it like that all right well i have to order some parts so i'm pretty much going to leave it here uh, there's still a little bit of work that i want to do uh, maybe to the exhaust and um, some other electrical things and, and just kind of play around with it make sure everything is good I'm going to go through a checklist at some point and see if there's anything else that I want to go through but for now thanks for watching and take it easy